An exclusive Euronews poll is predicting a win for the incumbent Greek centre-right New Democracy Party in the European Parliament elections in June. It shows the party lost 3% of its support between March and May, but still came out on top. It's been one year since Greeks went to the polls and elected New Democracy, led by Prime Minister Hyriakos Mitsotakis. And the party appears to be retaining its popularity over its moderate left-wing rivals, Syriza and PASOK. The Superpoll puts Syriza in second place and PASOK third. Mitsotakis leads Syriza's candidate for Prime Minister, Stefanos Kasalakis, by more than 20%. Greece is somewhat of an outlier. Most of the European ruling parties are likely to face setbacks in the elections. Tsotakis's New Democracy is expected to win one more seat in the European Parliament. And Syriza could keep its four seats in the European left benches. PASOK appears set to secure three MEPs to the Social and Democrats group. The Greek Solution Party is expected to grow and send two MEPs to the European Conservatives and Reformers. The Communist Party of Greece could have two seats in the non-attached group. With the far-right Spartans movement out of the race, the ultra-conservatives' votes could be absorbed by New Democracy. The ruling party has taken steps to move away from the far right, with Mitsotakis recently legalising same-sex marriage. The country's Supreme Court barred the Spartans over its alleged ties with the banned far-right Golden Dawn Party. The results mean that controversial New Democracy candidate Freddy Boleri could have a shot at entering the European Parliament. Valeri is serving a two-year prison sentence in Albania for election fraud. Voting will begin on June the 9th. Projections suggest radical right and Eurosceptic parties could gain 30 more seats in the European Parliament in the next European elections. This political trend could lead to a change in women's rights as it would move the EU away from a feminist agenda. Gender equality expert says that for many women, the EU remains irrelevant to their lives. For a lot of women, the EU institutions remains an abstract irrelevance to their lives. In Europe, there are 10 million women more than men, which means we are the biggest population in Europe but still we are underrepresented. European feminist organizations are unhappy at what they consider a lack of investment to respond back to misinformation and anti-gender movements. Online platforms amplifying conspiracy theories and disinformation have emboldened the far right and anti-gender movement, allowing them to form strong social networks and to share AI generative disinformation through algorithmic bias. And these anti-gender networks, they're well, ref they're well funded, they have a wealth of resources to tap into um, and they're using that to create campaigns and bots on social media. And in comparison to the feminist movement, we are underfunded and under-resourced and we face incredible difficulties in trying to combat this. Women who decide to enter a political career have to weigh up greater exposure to violence more than ever before. Psychological, physical and online violence are some of the problems they face that can lead to them giving up politics or becoming less vocal. J'ai constaté, je le constate aujourd'hui, qu'en tout cas, toutes les attaques qui me concernent sont des attaques qui visent à essayer de délégitimer mon propos, de décrédibiliser ce que je dis et toujours avec une orientation en fait qui est ciblée sur, sur mon identité de genre, sur le fait que je suis une femme. Euh, beaucoup de critiques, beaucoup d'insultes, de remarques sur le physique qui visent effectivement à toujours essayer de, de créer, de susciter un, un environnement en fait un environnement de, de peur un environnement qui est qui déstabilise